ecosystems. An ecosystem is all of the living organisms in a community uh, with the abiotic factors. So let's look at where it fits in um, with in ecology. So here's an organism. It's an individual living thing. A population would be all of the organisms of that particular species living in a particular area at a particular time. A community is going to be that population plus all of the other different populations of organisms. Um, so it would be all the termites that live in this area, all of the various different types of plant species, um, all of the different prairie dogs and, you know, whatever else, mice, whatever else lives here. Okay, so that's a community. Another way to say that is the biotic factors in the environment. So bio is life. It means all the living things in that area. An ecosystem, that's what we're studying now. An ecosystem is all of the communities plus the abiotic factors. So it's all of the biotic and abiotic. When you put an A in front of something, it means not. So it means all of the living things and all of the not living things. So it's all of the communities, plus it's all of the water and the soil and the air, all of those abiotic things. And then a really huge ecosystem would be the biosphere. It's all of the areas of the planet, um, the water, the air, the soil, etc., cetera, uh, where living things can be. Here's an example of an ecosystem. Um, the autotrophs, the producers, are these chemoautotrophic bacteria um, that live below a glacier in Antarctica. And they're kind of cool. Um, they oxidize sulfur, so they don't actually use sunlight. Um, they oxidize sulfur for their energy, so that means they're chemosynthetic. Um, and then they use iron as their final electron acceptor, which will make sense after we do um, after we do cellular respiration in a, in a couple months. Um, but anyway, when the iron hits the air, it accepts oxygen and um, turns red like this. And so then there are um, animals that eat those bacteria and all the other living things um, in that little area would be the ecosystem. So an ecosystem can be tiny like this little pool, um, or it can be huge like a forest or um, a wetland or a lake or whatever. So there are two major processes that occur in ecosystems, energy flow and chemical cycling. And it's really important that you know the difference between them. So um, energy flow means that you have a start and sort of a stop. So the start is the sun. So in 99.99 whatever percent of um, ecosystems on the planet, the sun is our source of energy. And so producers are able to convert that energy, that um, solar radiation, the the sunlight into organic molecules. And then those primary producers are eaten by uh, primary consumers, right, heterotrophs. And then those primary consumers are eaten by secondary consumers who are eaten by tertiary consumers, et cetera. And so the energy goes from the sun to primary producers, to primary consumers, to secondary consumers, maybe to detrivores, right, the organisms that eat them. Um, Here's the key though, there's the start, there's the sun, and then here's kind of the end, this is heat. So let's picture uh, maybe some grass as the primary producers, and then maybe the uh, primary consumers might be bunny rabbits. So here's the bunny, and then let's say a fox eats the bunny, that's kind of a bummer. Um, so the bunny rabbit, let's look at them. So they get their energy from um, grass, and if they're eaten, they give their energy to a fox. But in the meantime, they hop around and they look for food and they make body heat because they're endotherms, and they uh, care for their babies and they find mates. They do all kinds of stuff, right? And so all that stuff that they do, the living stuff, um, eventually that energy that they use is released as heat. So the energy is not destroyed, but it is uh, spread out through the environment. It increases something called entropy, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, that's heat loss, right? And so that energy wasn't created or destroyed, but it was lost from the ecosystem. On the other hand, chemical cycling is different. The molecules that are in, the atoms that are in you um, were probably in a dinosaur at one point, right? So if you look at the blue stuff, it's just, you know, going around and around and around, right? So if we look at the carbon that's in a primary producer, right, it's um, taking up carbon dioxide from the environment, and then it's making organic molecules like sugar, which we eat, and then, um, or a bunny eats, and then maybe a fox eats that. And then when the fox dies, or when the fox breathes out CO2, that carbon dioxide is um, taken up by plants again. Or when the fox dies, 
um, the detrivores break it down and they release the carbon dioxide up. So that carbon is continuously cycled around and around and around. So by chemical cycling, we're talking about carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and all the other elements that um, make us up. So notice that there's no end, it's just a big circle for the chemicals, whereas the energy really there sort of is an end when the heat, the, the energy is not destroyed, but it's spread out enough that nobody can use it anymore. Okay, there are some physical laws that govern energy flow and chemical cycling in ecosystems. Uh, the first is the first law of thermodynamics, and you don't have to memorize that it's the first law of thermodynamics, but you do need to know what that law is and apply it. It says that energy is not created or destroyed, it's only transformed. So with the example here, the cart has lots of kinetic energy, but not much potential energy, and then we goes down the hill, has very low potential energy, but lots of kinetic energy starts to go up. Um, the energy is not destroyed. It might be lost as heat due to friction, right? But it's not destroyed. And so we have the same um, idea through ecosystems. And so um, the energy from the sun goes to primary producers and then to primary consumers. Some of that energy is lost as heat, right? So be really careful not to say that the primary producers are creating energy. They are absolutely not creating energy. They're only transforming it from sunlight energy to organic molecules. So here's another um, way to show that. So here's light energy and then plants. Um, here's a, a, a plant or a photosynthetic protist because I can see um, a chloroplast and could also be a bacterial cell, but then it wouldn't be chloroplast. It would just be chlorophyll in the cell membrane. So anyway, this thing is doing photosynthesis, right? And so it's taking that sunlight energy and converting it into chemical energy. And that chemical energy is gonna be in the form of ATP. And that ATP is usually transformed to some type of organic molecule. Organic molecule just means it has two or more carbons. And so often it's glucose, C6H12O6, so that's six carbons. So organic means at least there's two carbons. Um, and then, you know, the plant might grow with that, might make its cellulose out of that or whatever. So this could be growth. Um, it could also just um, send the sugar right to the mitochondria. So this could all be inside one plant cell. Or you could think about us eating the plants and then doing this in our own mitochondria. But at any rate, those organic molecules can be broken down to carbon dioxide and see how that carbon is continuously cycled. The CO2 from cellular respiration is used in photosynthesis to make organic molecules, which is broken down in cellular respiration to make carbon dioxide. Um, might not occur in chloroplasts and mitochondria, might occur in bacteria that don't have membranous organelles. But anyway, this um, carbon is cycled. On the other hand, the energy comes from light energy, transformed to chemical energy. That chemical energy, the ATP, whether it's made directly by the uh, photosynthesis or whether it's transformed from organic molecules into ATP, that energy um, is used to do cellular work. So we can think of mechanical work, like walking around, right? Eventually that energy um, is lost as heat. So the original light energy isn't destroyed, it's just converted, right, to chemical energy, to mechanical energy, to heat energy. But heat energy is not super useful. It's spread out through the environment and nobody can really use it to do anything. So here's the second law of thermodynamics. And again, don't memorize which is the first, which is the second, but do you, you do have to understand that every exchange of energy increases the entropy of the universe. So entropy is going to be important um, later when we get to um, enzymes and, and that unit. But anyway, entropy is the disorder of the universe. And so think of um, an egg as really um, ordered. It's this pristine, perfect egg. There's only one way to be a perfect egg, but there are a million different ways that this egg could have broken, right? So this has high entropy. And this is super ordered, which is low entropy. And so you don't really need to memorize the egg or whatever, but what you do need to get um, the idea of is that the sun sends energy to producers. Well, actually, producers, producers, producers um, just you know, are good at harvesting sunlight energy. 
And then, um, so they're converting energy from sunlight into organic molecules, right? And then the organic molecules might be eaten by consumers. Who hop around and lose some of the energy as heat. Producers lose some of the energy as heat. The consumer might go from a primary consumer to a secondary consumer. Some of that energy is lost as heat. In all of these cases, this heat is increasing the entropy of the universe because that energy that was used is not usable again. So the main idea here is that energy conversions are never completely efficient. Some of the energy is always lost as heat. So if you're trying to cool yourself down by opening the refrigerator door, um, well, the way a refrigerator works is it takes heat and sends it out, right? So the room gets hotter as the refrigerator gets colder. But because the energy uh, conversion isn't super efficient, it's taking um, electricity and converting the electricity um, to, to move this as a heat pump, right? To move the heat out. But um, some of that conversion isn't efficient. So you're always making more heat um, than you're moving, right? So you're gonna, if you keep the refrigerator door open, you're actually gonna make your, your, your kitchen um, hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay, conservation of energy. It says that um, energy enters an ecosystem as solar ra radiation, it's transformed, um, but eventually lost as heat. So you're not creating or destroying sunlight, um, but you're, you're converting it into something that's not super useful. Be really careful, I think I might have said this already, but be really careful that you're not saying that producers create energy. They do not create energy, they just convert it. Law of conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, so another physical law to know. Um, you don't need to memorize the name, and actually it's not even entirely true because e equals mc squared, and we can convert between mass and energy, but for biology, um, it's true. So if you ignore um, radioactive materials and stuff, um, the carb, you know, it, it's true for our purposes. So the carbon in you, before it was in you, was in another organism. Before that, it was in the air. Before that, it was in another organism. Before that, it was in the air, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the carbon in you was very likely in a dinosaur once upon a time. And so this shows you um, a cycle, um, in this case, nitrogen cycle. And so this is showing you that nitrogen is, is cycled through the environment. So there's nitrogen in the atmosphere, it's in the form of N2 or molecular nitrogen, which has this really strong bond that we'll talk about soon. But anyway, three strong covalent bonds. Um, so that nitrogen um, can be converted into usable nitrogen um, by lightning, but more commonly by bacteria. So these are nitrogen fixing bacteria. Those nitrogen fixing bacteria can live in the soil or they can live in the roots of certain special plants called legumes. Anyway, uh, that nitrogen um, is taken up by plants and then animals eat the plants and they have their nitrogen now. They can poop um, and that nitrogen can then be absorbed by plants again when you have detrivores or decomposers breaking them down. The animal can die and the decomposers can um, change that nitrogen into a usable form again. The plants can take it up and we have this circle over and over again. Or there's these um, denitrifying bacteria, bummer, because they'll take um, usable nitrogen and convert it into atmospheric nitrogen again. But the whole idea is the amount of nitrogen in the planet isn't changing. Um, it's just being converted from one form to another to another. Another idea here is that ecosystems are these open systems constantly absorbing energy. Um, they can take mass from um, somewhere else. So you very, very rarely have a closed ecosystem unless you're talking about the entire planet. Um, maybe nitrogen is coming um, into this ecosystem from a different um, ecosystem nearby as the, the water moves through this ecosystem. Um, energy mass and trophic levels. So the next idea is this idea of autotroph versus heterotroph. So autotrophs are producers, and they're the, the, the first step um, in a food web. So they build molecules. In other words, they build organic molecules themselves, right? So organic molecules are things like sugar. They have more than one carbon. So an example is sugar, C6H12O6. Um, 
They typically use photosynthesis, so they're going to take um, energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy, ATP, to build up sugar. Or they might actually do chemosynthesis, um, in which case they don't use sunlight. They might use something like um, sulfur, and they'll take the electrons off of that and build organic molecules from there. So make sure you know the difference between photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. In both cases, they are making organic molecules, but in photosynthesis, which is the vast majority of um, producers in, on our planet, um, they use sunlight. Chemosynthesis, very pretty rare, really. Um, they don't need any sunlight. Um, so it, can, it doesn't have to occur, but it usually occurs in total darkness. Um, and they use some type of um, chemical instead of sunlight to um, start the, the food web. Heterotrophs, another term for heterotrophs are consumers. And they depend on um, either some other heterotroph or they depend on um, producers. And so here's an alpaca. This would be a consumer and it's eating um, the producer, which is um, a plant. This would be photo, this would be um, a chemosynthetic um, food web. And so you're gonna have crabs that eat these tube worms. The tube worms have um, symbiotic bacteria that live in them that do some type of chemosynthesis. Make sure you know primary producer versus primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, etc. So if you look at a food web and you don't know who's who, all of the arrows um, leaving, notice how the algae don't have any arrows going to them. And same with this water weed. So these are the producers. So even if you don't know what algae is, you can tell that it's a producer here. These are all the primary consumers. We can include the turtle here because anything that eats the producer would be the primary consumer. Um, here we have the secondary consumers because they eat primary consumers and actually the frog if it eats a fly who ate the water weed would be um, a secondary consumer, right? So one thing that's a little tricky is that we have primary consumers right here, secondary consumers right here, um, but if you look at trophic levels, here's the first trophic level, here's the second trophic level, right? Here's the third trophic level. So this is this trout is on the a secondary consumer, but it's the third trophic level because with trophic levels we include producers. Make sure you understand what detrivores or decomposers are. Um, they're going to take dead organic matter um, or non-living organic matter and break it down. And so the nutrients from all of these organisms eventually go to decomposers that um, break the nutrients down enough so that a producer can um, absorb it again. Uh, prokaryotes, bacteria, archaea, and um, also fungi, it's a eukaryote, um, are really important decomposers. And so this is just the final picture again, showing you that chemicals um, cycle, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, notice there's no beginning or end, they just go around and around, whereas energy flow starts with typically with the sun and then it ends as heat. And it's not gone, it's just not usable.